if the process crashes, the GUI still, will still be there. There will be silent crash for the user. Right? Binary transactions use a thread pool. So if you have a service, everyone here knows how to use a service, and you have a binder to the service, you bind that service, you make a method call to the, to the binder. Now if you do that in one single process, a local binder is called, even if in AIDL, the call will be done on the same thread as from the caller, so it won't be a separate thread. But if you put the service in a, in a background process, and you do the same thing, but suddenly this happens in the thread pool, so you don't have to worry about blocking the main thread anymore. You're always thinking about not blocking the main thread anymore. So, another process, how oh, do I want to that one? Job of the memory, I won't talk about that already. But it's actually quite important, because sometimes, you know, if you do a lot of heavy stuff, you your application grows, it's more features and stuff, things like that. Yeah, it's great. Double memory, your IFT crashes in one of the processes. It's great. Okay. I'm going quite fast here, so I think I might be able to catch up. I can tell a story <laughs> um, The last part, and this is the thing that's actually interesting. We learn how to write Android applications. We learn how to use activity and surveys and uh, fragments and later. Uh, broadcast receivers and content providers, but we still miss some important details. I'm going to talk about those. And many of you here probably, you know, you probably know this already. I mean, you're all really skilled developers, as I've seen from the sessions that I'm going to talk about rest of the day. But anyway, let's talk about them anyway. So, application component. Have you used that one? Well, I suggest it's nothing you know, inherently wrong with using it, but it's usually quite unnecessary. We really don't need to use it. Uh, actually, it's better in case you just have a single node, because then you won't allocate stuff in, uh, until you actually need it. So, the problem with single nodes in Android is people tend to use them the wrong way. We need a context for doing anything that's Android related. So, if you have a single node that's now listed to broadcast things, for instance, which is quite a common example. Uh, you do that, and what people tend to forget is to make sure that the context that is stored inside a single one is the application context, and not just your activity or your service or something like that. Super common mistake. So make sure that whenever you store your context in something that is going to live longer than your components, make sure you both get application context, because that one is a single one. It has some limitations though. Many people don't, are not aware of this. Like if you inflate the layout using this one, it gets a default theme. So it won't get your style to your effect itself. The same thing goes with if you, if you try to inflate the layout from a service. Same problem there. Starting an activity from this context creates a new task, which might also mess up your task stack. So when the user presses back, they might get kind of unexpected behavior. But on the other hand, it might also be exactly what you expected to happen. So, uh, but you should consider these limitations or these uh, things with application context when you use it. So many of you have problems with saving the state when your user leaves activity. Have you ever had that one issue? No, I do Okay. Well, so which one should you use? The first one. The first one? On setting instances of call when you use the press back or when you call finish.
Really? So how many bytes does the lender take in the fragment uh, UI framework thing, do you think? It's a dependency, yeah. That's why we have pro card to script away everything we don't need. Um, they fix bugs in this one. So you don't have to wait for unnamed developer who never updates their phone. For typical fragment graph, this I see all the time. Um, <coughs> this is why you shouldn't use SMT class, by the way. So what will happen after this one? If the user backs up the application. Yeah. So the, the fragment will be collected, of course, normally and everything, but you will run into this one, the legal state exception. Why? Because the fragment wasn't attached anymore. Because this, the on post execute, it will happen sometime in the future. Of course, on the main part, but it will happen in the future. And we don't know how the activity looks at that. It might actually leave the whole activity. So, uh, not much to say here. Don't use the symptoms. First of all, use a loader whenever loading something into fragments. Make sure you cancel requests in on pause and on detach. How many can you use the image library to cancel? It's great, right? Remember to call cancel requests on that target that you loaded it into. Otherwise, you might end up with the same thing. Why do services never do this? Why should we never do this? Now, this is short term. Maybe you have an if clause there which calls out the default to return to normal. So if you're going to bind to a service, the first time you bind to the service with a specific intent. And if that call will return null for some reason, maybe the service isn't properly set up yet, you're waiting for something, etc. etc. So you return null the first time and say, well, let's try to retry later. The problem is the client will never get a call to own service connection. Other retry for connecting will get a little time. Because it's only the first call to online, the, the, the first bind service that will result in an on bind call. So, you can use this to your advantage, basically. You can actually take the get an action string and filter that action string and return different, uh, different binders. That's great. Or, the other option, use the URI, which is nice to have to do that you have one action screen, but it makes it this size whether the intent is unique by looking at the action screen and the data URI. So you can pass parameters if you want to bind through the, the lab, that one to the intent in the URI. You can't add an extra, so you bind it if you can't do that. But this is a way to actually pass parameters when you bind it to the service. Considerations for using public using services. The binder effect is identified by the action screen and the data you write. Okay. On bind and on, on unbind are called once for a pretty unique intent. So if you have three clients connecting to the same intent, same action screen or same you write, you will get only one call to unbind anyway. And once they disconnect by the unbind service, once the lost one has disconnected, you get a so the on-bind or unbind is very useful for keeping track when you actually have an appliance in your service so you know if you stop it collect regular resources. Start sticking. Uh, we'll return to the intent. And there are really weird side effects of this. People don't expect it. I ah, return yeah, to start sticking so I get restarted again. But you don't get the same intent as you got when you start the service. You get no list there. There is another uh, constant you can return to start sticking with Deliver, re deliver content, yeah. um, which, uh, which deals with that. Binder calls on local thread, uh, binder calls happens on the local thread for the local process local services. I talked about that already. That can also happen you break a service, you deliver something that happens in the background, and you press the button you have your call through the binder, and suddenly you get an ANR anyway. Okay. Most common content writers say, oh, it's a little bit lower, so you know that you can't see it probably. I'm not sure if you can see it. Anyway, we tend to forget to set the notification URI. Uh, what happens when we don't 
set the notification URI, well, then you want the client to know this one data has been changed. So your fancy application which goes to the network and listens to the content provider won't know this one data has been updated. Well, even this isn't the mistake you did, that this is probably the other common thing you forget to call notify. So both of these needs to go into your content provider. If you forget this, you get a really, you have to enforce reloading in some way. I've actually seen several examples where people have added sending a broadcast in the content provider because they didn't get this right. Don't forget bulk insert, especially if you load lots of data. So bulk insert is a way to speed, speed up the insertion. It will also reduce the number of notified that will be in so it will reduce the load of the whole application. So if you do this, you can actually pass a transaction and insert many rows of them coming from transaction. Uh, if you have a lot of rows to insert, you might want to split up this into several transactions because you will walk the database otherwise. But people tend to forget the bulk insert and that slows down your application and the database handling towards that one. Using broadcast. How many of you use broadcast? Good completed. Stop that. <laughs> I've worked at Sony before. Maybe, you know, I usually, every session I had, I was like, don't use good completed. It messes up the phone. That's why the phone is so slow and short. And that's why there are so many applications running from the beginning. So, so a very much, much better way to do this is to use the intent. User present. Anyone who has seen that one before? Use it. A few. It's great. First of all, boot complete is only sent once. How many, when was the last time you rebooted your phone? See? User present is sent every time you unlock the phone. So you get a call mark. You make will be sure that you will be started. Now, when you get started so often, it's probably a good thing to be nice to the system. So then put this into a separate process, this specific broadcast receiver. Then you won't use as much memory. So what do you can do then add a process directive. And if you add a process directive with a code, where the name of the process is a colon, it gets hidden. It's like a private sub-process. Um, okay. Coming to the end here. Monitoring the network, very common mistake, people forget about this. The first two are people are, are people usually put in that the connectivity change when you go from 3D to Wi-Fi, etc. Uh, the connection change from the Wi-Fi sub account is also very useful. You can detect which network you're on, and if this is the whole network, you can deal with that, etc. But the last one is actually part of the hidden API. Is anyone from Google here? Can you unhide this one? No, you've had it for a couple of years. <laughs> so, when the user turns on Wi-Fi tethering, your application suddenly crashed because you get an unknown state change. You're on, you're not on Wi-Fi, but you're on 3G, but you're not really because Wi-Fi is available. It's really weird. And this one will tell you if you went, if Wi-Fi tethering was turned on or off. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing about the last one here. Uh, this one here. Well, you know that boot completed requires permission. I don't know if you mentioned that. Uh, but user pressure doesn't require permission, which makes it even better. Okay. Yes, get my book. I will talk more about things there. Uh, I will have a lot of important stuff in there as well. Uh, so, uh, you should always kind of go quote this, eh? so I think it was supposed to be appropriate for this session here. Many problems with Android apps can be fixed with the proper use of the hammer class. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, uh,